found that PET CT, um, when we include the head and the neck and the chest arteries, has got very good diagnostic accuracy for giant cell arteritis compared with temporal artery biopsy. That is our standard of care and um, over the last five to ten years other imaging modalities have been looked at including ultrasound and MRI scans uh, but temporal artery biopsy remains the standard of care in most centres around the world. So we had 64 patients that were enrolled, all patients were from Sydney, Australia um, and the patients had to be suspected of newly having GCA, so these were not relapsed patients. Um, they all underwent their PET CT scan from the vertex to the diaphragm within 72 hours of starting treatment. As we know, if we don't treat patients, they're at risk of having complications early on, and if we delay a scan, it may turn falsely negative. The scans were read by nuclear medicine doctors who were blinded to the clinical and the biopsy features. And we found that of the patients who underwent biopsy, which was 58 patients, 12 had a positive biopsy. And that's 21% of our cohort. And of those 12, 11 had a positive PET-CT scan or 92% had a positive scan. So giant cell arteritis from a clinical perspective often looks like other mimicking conditions such as infection and cancer and we often worry that we're missing that when we see patients with headaches and high blood markers. We found that a total of uh, 13 patients had an incidental alternative diagnosis made on the PET scan that included seven infections, five malignancies and one patient who had subacute thyroiditis which was mimicking giant cell arteritis and in particular one of those patients had a very serious cervical spine infection which was mimicking giant cell arteritis and had we gone down a corticosteroid immunosuppressive pathway he may well have come to serious harm and because the PET scan identified that as the cause of his symptoms uh, he was able to start on appropriate antimicrobial therapy. I believe it is practice changing. I believe it uh, would support PET-CT when we include the head, neck and chest as a first line test for patients newly suspected of having giant cell arteritis. I think we do need to be mindful that it's not perfect and that patients where the clinician feels that they have a very high likelihood and if they were to get a negative scan, for instance, we should go on to perform a biopsy. The study would support particularly in a low to moderate risk patient who has a negative study that that would be very, very reassuring and those group of patients probably does not need to go on to have a biopsy. In Australia, on average, we would pay around 500 US dollars for a PET CT scan and indeed the protocol that we used in this study was probably cheaper than that because we used a lower dose of tracer of FDG. Um, I believe that compared to temporal artery biopsy, uh, which is a surgical procedure, it involves surgical time, sur it involves operating theatre time, it involves an anatomical pathology um, uh, time, examining the biopsy, it is cost effective. Um, I believe in the United States that the cost of PET-CT is much higher. Um, however, when we think about the full workup for a newly suspected GCA patient, which currently would include a temporal artery biopsy with all of those costs in the United States, as well as a CT scan of the chest, which is recommended by the American Heart Association on diagnosis of GCA, it may well turn out to be cost effective. From an imaging perspective, um, I think a lot of anatomical pathologists have expertise in reviewing temporal artery biopsies. But I think that we are in the process of learning how to um, what tests are appropriate, imaging tests are appropriate, and how to interpret them. I feel that the benefit of a high resolution MRI of the scalp or of a PET CT is that the images are there for review um, by other clinicians. And um, I feel that um, the one issue that potentially is present with ultrasound is that it's very operator dependent. And in centers with high numbers of patients, I think an ultrasound is a, also an appropriate test for this condition. However, ultrasound in areas where they're not used to this scan for giant cell arteritis, 
uh, I think that uh, reliability and accuracy can become more of an issue than with MRI or with PET-CT. Thank you.